Hello. <laughs> so, um, I'm going live on here. Usually I go live on my personal page, but, um, and I can't figure out how to do what I normally do on the business page. But anyways, so, my name is Foxy Jackson. I am the face of Foxy's I Speak, the founder, president, and today I wanted to talk about strangulation. Um, hold on just one minute. Go back to my comfort trying to set up this other um dilly wop anyways a lot of times people um who are sexually assaulted or who are abused in a um intimate relationship such as um, intimate partners, be that marriage, be that boyfriend, girlfriend, be that we just talking, we not really like that anymore. Um, oftentimes strangulation is involved. And in strangulation, hold on, I'm trying to log on to this other, anyways, in strangulation, a lot of people will say, he choked me. And when they say he choked me, what they're meaning is that he used, or she, because women do it too. But for um, for this video and for um, consistency, I may use he, I may use she. Um, so anyways, they may say that the person choked them. And... Um, here he goes. One second. <sighs> Anyways, let me just do it here. Um, so what happened for me and my personal experience when I was strangled, there is a difference between choking and strangling. Choking means that there is something that is down off in your esophagus or down off in your um, air pipe, your trachea, that is blocking the flow of air. So it's not your esophagus, my apologies, it's your trachea that goes down your throat into your lungs. And there's something there that's blocking the air from going in. It's internal. So choking is internal. Strangulation is external, meaning I have put my hands around your throat. Um, I have wrapped something around your throat um, and caused you to not be able to breathe. Um, the other part of that is not only does it prevent you from breathing because it blocks your trachea, it can also block the flow of blood to and from your brain. So you have the arteries and you have the veins that come down and go back to your heart. Um, and so all of that is involved in strangulation. And if you put your hands around your throat, I just want you to see something really quickly. So I'm going to count when it goes to zero so I can keep up with it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight. That's the average time it takes to be unconscious. If we extend that to 15 seconds, that's the time that it's the average time for you to have some brain damage from lack of oxygen. Um, as it goes on and progresses, as the longer you prevent blood flow from flowing to the brain and from the brain, um, you can cause severe brain damage, you can cause seizures, strokes, um, 
You can cause tears in the vessels that are here. You can cause fractures in these little bones that are up in your throat, in the throat area. You can cause fractures in your cervical spine, which is the neck spine. Um, sometimes these can be minor fractures that you never see or that are, that are never really noticeable because they are still in alignment. Um, as far as the damage to the vessels, you can cause minor, minor tears in those vessels. And as the body goes to heal those vessels, it sends white blood cells, it sends cholesterol, it sends everything to that area to heal that tear. But it, what it essentially does is it forms like a clot to stop the bleeding or to heal it. Sometimes that can block off the, the um, flow of blood to or from the um, brain, depending on which vessel it's in. Um, sometimes that clot can break off and go into the brain and then stop flow or it can break off and go to the heart and cause a heart attack so you can end up with a heart attack or a stroke those are long term sometimes short term sometimes midterm results of being strangled um, when a person is strangled um, immediately the person who is being strangled may become anxious afraid they may think they're going to die um, they may panic, they may freeze up, or they may immediately start fighting. They may scratch their neck. They may claw at the other person. Um, and like I said in the, just a few minutes ago, it only takes eight seconds for you to start losing consciousness. That's not very long. That's not very long at all for you to completely not be able to do anything to protect yourself. Um, in the, in the mode or in the progress of being strangled, you can lose the ability to control your bowels. You can lose the ability to control your bladder. It means that you're going to pee and poop on yourself. You, can, um, you, won't, you may not be able to scream. You may not be able to breathe. Um, you may bite your tongue. You may bite your lips. You may bite the inside of your mouth. You may severely scratch and, and injure yourself on your throat and neck area from trying to get the assailants or the person who's doing it, their hands off of you. Um, you can have, after it's all over, you can have depression, you can have PTSD, you can have anxiety, you can have swelling that occurs in the neck muscles in the, around the neck area that may not be present immediately. That swelling can close off your um, windpipe and um, cause you to have difficulty breathing. It can um, put pressure on the vessels in your neck and cause the blood to um, have a difficult time traveling to and from your brain, um, which means you can have some dizziness, you can have some lightheadedness, um, and let's not forget like the bruising and thing that's around your neck. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about most, in addition to that, is understanding what strangulation does when the person is strangling you. Um, it's just the same as sexual assault. So in sexual assault, sometimes there is no trauma, but that doesn't mean that you weren't sexually assaulted. So in strangulation, just because you don't have bruises or abrasions or scratches or um, fractures or anything like that around your neck doesn't mean there, that, there, that there is not internal trauma. It doesn't mean that this is not a life-threatening experience. It doesn't mean that it is of no importance, okay? Um, anytime you are strangled, it is very important that you get to some medical facility to be evaluated. Um, it is important that you take note of how you feel. Are you losing memory? Are you having a hard time remembering things? Are you having a hard time finding your words? Um, have you, are you having a hard time understanding things? Are you having, um, visual changes? Is it um, blurred vision? You're seeing spots. Um, you're having problems with your hearing. So just to 
um, give you an example. In um, the work I do, I may come across a patient who's been strangled, and sometimes there's no signs that they've been strangled. And the only time I find out is when I start to ask questions about were you choked, were you strangled, did he put anything around your neck, um, whatever, so how comes you didn't die, he should try harder. I will be blocking you once I finish. Um, anyways, so that's James Mutombo who wants the person to try harder to kill the person. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so anyways, for those of us who are on a different level of thinking and thought process, um, whenever I have a patient, oftentimes I don't find out that they've been strangled unless I ask a series of questions. So know that when you do go to the hospital, when they're asking you these questions, it's not to um, um, criticize you or anything. It's so that they can assess whether or not they need to do further evaluation for a particular thing. Um, sometimes I have found women who come in and they have um, these little spotted bruises, which are called petechiae, in their eyes around their eyes, it may be in their ears. Um, some women have had bleeding from the ears. Some women have um, difficulty hearing during or after the strangulation. Some may have the bruising um, in other places on their bodies, like around their neck. Um, they may have it in their head. Um, all of these are, are things that are symptoms or signs that happen because of the process that goes on when you're strangled because of the blood not being able to flow thank you marcus because of the blood not being able to flow to or from the brain or air not being able to flow to or from the um lungs and brain um so one of the biggest myths like i said before is that if there's no um if there's no signs of trauma then there, it's not that bad it is that bad. Um, that's just like saying, oh, because he didn't really hurt you or you don't have any bruises. Um, the sexual assault wasn't that bad. We have to get out of the mode of judging whether or not something was bad as in if there was a lot of physical damage. Because what many people are forgetting about is the psychological damage is just as bad as the physical damage, if not worse. Um, if you hit me, then I can do something about that. But when you, and I can heal from it and it disappears. But emotional abuse or psychological abuse stays there for a much longer time and takes a lot more effort to heal from than the physical damage. Um, so with, with being strangled, there's a lot of psychological damage that comes along with that. Um, you have anxiety, you have depression, you have PTSD, you have, um, you can develop nightmares, you can develop flashbacks. Um, for example, for me, like with clothing, a lot of times I can't wear clothing on my neck because it reminds me of when I was strangled. Um, one of the things that I, I did to get past a lot of that, because I know many of you understand that I have done a lot of work on getting rid of, getting rid of my fears or conquering my fears. And so I do a lot of women's self-defense, um, a lot of which will be taught at the retreat this year in April. It's the end of April. Um, and in the process of doing women's self-defense, you learn how to get out of chokeholds, various chokeholds. Um, which means you have to be choked, choked. They're called choked holes, but they're actually strangulation holes. Um, but most people understand it if you say choke holes. So just know by definition, it is a strangulation hold because someone is putting something on the outside of your neck to stop the flow of blood and air. Um, so one of my experiences that I had in my Krav Maga class was we were going over um, 
chokehold release. And as long as I could see the person coming towards me, uh, preparing me to be strangled and me to get out of it, um, it was easy for me to process because I could get ready. I understood that this was non-threatening. Um, I knew I was in a safe place, etc., etc. However, one of the goals of uh, Krav Maga is to prepare you to function in a state of chaos. And so what they did is they pushed us to one side of the room. And there were a lot of us. There's men and there's women. There's young and there's old. Old. Because, baby, I'm not getting old. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, but there's young and there's old. And um, they make you close your eyes. And so you have to stand there in a neutral position with your eyes closed. With a lot of noise going on around you. So there are people who are actively being strangled and getting out of it. There are people who are throwing punches. There are, there's movement, there are footsteps, and you don't know if the footsteps are coming towards you or going away from you to someone else. And you have to stand in that moment and be ready because as soon as that person's hands touch your throat, you have to be able to automatically get out of that hold. Because you only got eight seconds. Some people only got about five because they'll panic and that'll use up a lot of their oxygen and, and blood anyway. So just think you've got five seconds to react and get out of that hold. When we were doing um, defensive driving, it takes three seconds for the average person to react to what's going on in front of them, which is why by law you're supposed to follow three seconds behind the person which people don't do. But anyways, um, so just think you've got three seconds to react. That gives you two seconds to do something and get out of it and get air and blood flowing back to your brain. That's not a lot of time. So I say that because it is very important, even if you feel like the traumas that you have gone through are so devastating that you never want to be in that position again, the fact that you don't want to be in that position again is going to put you in that position unprepared. There's no time for us to be unprepared anymore. At all. It is time for women to be prepared to defend themselves. Period. And I say women not because men shouldn't be prepared as well. Because there are some aggressive women who abuse Men, please don't mistake me for that, for thinking that that doesn't happen. I say women because traditionally it is thought that women are um, not as strong as men, not as aggressive as men because of testosterone levels, etc., etc. Um, however, it is important that you are prepared to defend yourself against anyone be that man or woman or anyone in between. It is important that you are prepared to defend yourself from everyone. Five seconds is not a long time. You're supposed to wash your hands longer than five seconds. You're supposed to wash your hands longer than 15 seconds. And in 15 seconds, you could be dead. Or you could have severe uh, irreversible brain damage that lasts the rest of whatever life you have left. Um, so, if you want a referral to um, one of the classes, one of the self-defense classes that I take, inbox me or comment below. I'll be glad to give you a referral and set you up for a free training class. Um, if you are interested in coming to the retreat that is in April um, we will be teaching some of these techniques I encourage you to purchase your ticket ASAP there are payment plans available if you need one inbox me or comment below and I'll inbox you the information um, but you need to reserve your space because in self-defense classes you can't have huge groups and be effective most of the time there are smaller groups so 
um, be sure to, and smaller, I mean like 50 or, or less. So about 50 or 60 is what we're shooting for this year for the retreat so that um, there is ample time for me to spend with everyone and ample time for everyone to be involved in and experience everything that we have planned for the retreat. If you have any questions or comments, please list them below. I'll be following this today um, and thereafter. Um, share the video, make your sisters and brothers aware, um, educate yourself, prepare yourself, and stay safe. As they say, train hard and go home safe. That's Krav Maga Dallas, baby. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Bye.